its uh, spirit and uh, sprint and money by uh, uh, sorry sprint and money congratulations you have won uh, uh, 8000 <laughs> i don't know how much money by stefano zaccioli <laughs> thanks so Clearly, money topics are not particularly popular in Debian, given the, the audience of this both and the previous one, but still it's something we, we deal with. So in this, this is sort of a half away. There is first a few slides explaining what we have done about sprints and how we have mu used money recently. And then there is an open discussion about how we should use money in Debian in general, how much money we should keep around, and all this kind of stuff. And the second part is shamelessly copied from a uh, buff by Sledge a couple of DebConfs ago on this very same topic. So please take a second to install Gobi 05 or Gobi Infinote if you haven't yet done that, and open the DC11-money document. There are some questions on which I will need your suggestions. And please, while we go through them at the end of this session, take a moment to note them down because we really need to report back on this suggestion on how to use money. So uh, um, I'll start with Sprint. So what is a Sprint? Well, it's something that is called uh, in a way, lot of different ways in different communities. And essentially, just you take an existing team of people, you know, a group of people working together, you make them meet for a couple of days in some place with a defined hacking agenda, and you're done. They are great because works get done, because you know grudges we go through online get smoothed down a bit, and this is the same effect DebConf has, but it's something we can have way more often than once per year. People have fun, and the enthusiasm of the people having fun stays around and get more people involved. So I think they are really a fundamental part of a volunteer project as we are. Um, Sprints in Debian is a sort of a long tradition. Um, the we have had the first Deb camp in 2005, as far as I remember, and that was the first example of how you can get people in together and work together for a while on Debian-related topics. Then we have had, from 2005 on, various kind of core team Meet, core team meeting periodically around the world to get stuff done. Somehow was related, only related to uh, core teams. Then in 2006, for three years, the region of Extremadura, which was using uh, uh, a Debian-based distribution, which has now been merged with Debian, uh, sort of invented this idea that institution can contribute to Debian by simply organizing Sprint, organizing meetings where people meet and stay together and act on whatever they want as long as it is Debian related. And I think this has been a great idea, a wonderful way to contribute to Debian, and I think it has also taught us how beneficial those kind of activities can be for, for us. They've been doing that for three years, and then in 2008 they sort of stopped organizing that. Um, the Sprint program is something I've done like uh, in October 2010, it's by no means something which has invented the notion of Sprint in Debian. Sprint has always existed in Debian. But it was just an attempt to uh, streamline a bit the procedure to have a Sprint, make it clear what you should do if you want to have a Sprint, and as a side effect of that, encouraging having more Sprint in Debian, and also a way of learning from other free software projects, how they are doing things, and try to improve what we are doing by looking at what others are doing. In particular, I've been in touch with the Gnome people and with the KDE people to actually share some best practices on um, Sprint organization. So all the material related to Sprints is on the wiki, at wikidebian.org slash Sprints. There is a list of Sprints you have been doing, because I think it's important to show to people which donate money to Debian how we use the money. And you also find pointers to a couple of documents. The first one is the Sprint How To, which is pretty straightforward, but is made in a way that you first organize something, you need to find an organizer, you decide a place, you decide a date, you decide who are the, particip the participants on the basis of the logistic choice you have made, you decide an agenda, which is very important, and you prepare a tentative budget. At that point, you still don't know if your sprint is going to happen or not. And when you have a tentative budget, you go to the DPL, you say, OK, this is our agenda. This is what we want to do when who is planning to come. And this is how much it will cost to Debian. So I stress the point that it's Debian cost, because some sprints might have sponsor. 
So you need uh, DPL authorization essentially only if you want to use Debian money. And at that point, either you get approval or you get uh, refusal. I think I've approved every single sprint that people have asked to me. So the, the chances that yours will be approved are pretty high. Uh, and at that point, well, you add a wiki page under, wiki, under a wiki Debian org sprint using the nice template which is there. You announce the sprint. This is very important. I think it's fundamental when we use money that we are transparent and that when we do work in a sprint, we do all we can not to cut off people who could not attend the sprint. So announcing that there is a sprint and maybe explaining how people could participate remotely is a fundamental step in having a sprint. You have the sprint, you have fun. At the end, you prepare a report, you send a minute somewhere. Ideally, it's the... Uh, the most appropriate mailing, mailing list for your needs. Might be project for something general, might be your team list for something specific to a team. And that one, once all this is done, you ask for reimbursement. This point is put at the last on purpose because ideally it was a way to first you, be, you are public, first you announce everything, you send the minutes, and then you ask for the reimbursement. Um, so this is how you do that. And the important, for probably the most important message of this both is you can have a sprint too. So it's not only for core teams, it's for every group of people in Debian which is willing to work together for a couple of days or a week or whatever, is willing to be transparent about that and try to work with people who cannot attend. And really, is for every kind of possible team or group of people that we might have in Debian. Um, this is a brief report that I have also blogged a few days ago about the sprint we have had uh, since April 2010. I go back only to that because essentially it's the, the moment in which uh, people started asking me if they can have a sprint or not, so I didn't manage to go through, I didn't have the time to go through the archive and look past that. But still, you can see from this that in, um, uh, in, in 16 months, we have had 15 sprints, all of them in Europe, about all of them, half of them in Germany. That's surely because we have a very active community of developers in Germany and also because we have some facilities in German which are really friendly to us, like the uh, uh, Linux hotel, I think, which is very friendly in, and a welcome place for sprints. Um, the number of participants varied a lot. So we have had the sprints with 25 people, but kind of weird because those sprints are those where we have also had external sponsor. So most of, a lot of those people are not necessarily people uh, coming on behalf of Debian, but maybe by other in entities interested in Debian Edu. We have had sprints which costed us nothing because external sponsor came in and decided that they were willing to sponsor sprints. Uh, and all of this has costed something like 10,000 euros. So I've normalized the cost in Europe where they were not in Europe, like, uh, for instance, pound in UK. Uh, but this is the cost. So essentially, a bit more than one year of sprints costed to Debian 10,000 euro. So this is the cost, which is, um, I think, pretty low compared with the result that those sprint has produced. And if you look at my blog post on the matter, you will find that every, every one of these sprints is uh, linked to a report in which you can say you can see the agenda, the announcement, and the minutes, so you can track what they've been doing in the various sprints and compare that to the price. Um, so this is for the sprints, and sprint is just one of the way we use money for. So there are other in, important information about money that I feel we are not always aware of. So just to stress a point which has already been made in the previous talk. Debian by itself does not have any money because Debian for the legal world sort of doesn't exist. So it is not a legal entity which can hold money. So all the money that Debian has are actually money which are hosted on behalf of Debian by the trusted what we call trusted organizations. So this is explicitly mentioned in the constitution. Um, all trusted organizations are equal. So we used to have a special casing for SPI and then we generalized that with a vote some years ago. Uh, even though we use some trusted organization more than others. In particular, most of the money we use and we deal with, and we de we deal with are in SPI in the US and in FFIS in Germany. Um, money comes in via donations and donation goes to those trusted organizations, and uh, are used, uh, the decision of how to use the money is a decision 
done by the DPL in consultation with the developers. So I have no problem admitting that I've not been particularly good in doing this in consultation with the developers. It seems to me that we have a tradition that the DPL decides, which is, can be a fine interpretation of the Constitution as long as we have good method for reporting to developers how we use money. And this is exactly why I'm very much interested in the work that the auditors can do because I, think, I really think we need to be more transparent in how we use the money and also on how the DPL decides how to use the money. So how much do we have? I've, at present, we have uh, 55,000 US dollar air market for Debian at SPI. This includes also the DebConf uh, air market SPI, because during DebConf we decide to have a separate air mark to make uh, dealing with money easier, but they are all the same money, so DebConf money is also Deb Debian money. Um, and we have 76,000 euro at FFIS. That's may, if you do the conversion today, that's something like 100,000 euro. Unfortunately, this is not necessarily the spending power we have, because as uh, you might have heard in the previous talk, of this money, we can have money which has already been pledged for specific purposes, but not yet, not yet paid. So there is some degree of uncertainty, and that is something we should work on to improve, and this is again something we are gonna work on with the, with the auditors. But the ballpark numbers are like this. So what do we use money for? So even though a very important line in the Debian yearly budget is DebConf, that's not actually something we use money for. Better, we use money for DebConf, but over the years is a sort of amortized zero cost. This is a goal we have set this year in, discu in discussion with the DebConf team, among the DebConf team and myself, but it's also something which has actually happened over the past three to four DebConfs. So if you look at the budget of DebConf, you have some here in which DebConf is particularly expensive, so we spend more money than what the sponsor gives us, but in other years, they are particularly cheap, so we get more money from the sponsor than what we actually spend. So if you take this, it balances out very well, and we have set, up, set out as a goal that of having DebConf a completely amortized zero-cost event over the years. So this is not one of the things we use money for, at least ideally. We use a lot of money for travel sponsoring. Sprint is a big line on that, uh, on that front. But we also sponsor um, developers going to specific events when they go there in a, as a representative of Debian. So that does not mean that you can come to Debian and ask for the FOSDEM tickets or for whatever event you regularly attend. This is when people invite us to be present at some event and when they are not willing to pay the trip themselves and still we judge that it's important for Debian to be there. So it has happened to me to authorize uh, travel reimbursement for this kind of, uh, of cases. And also we have some special purpose DebConf related sponsoring. For instance, you might have heard of the DebConf Newbies Initiative. This is something we do on, uh, uh, outside of the DebConf budget, but still, I believe there is quite some value into it. This is probably the biggest, uh, the biggest line in our budget. Probably, again, because we are trying to have a quarterly report with the auditors, but we don't have them yet. The second big line is DSA hardware. So we need to buy machines, we need to replace machines. Sometimes we are able to get donated material, sometimes we are not. So we go, out, we go out and buy material. And also we have some hardware related services. I've mentioned only warranties here, but there might be more services to maintain the hardware current. Then we also use money to actually buy hardware for individual DDs. This is something I've been trying to advertise a bit. It's not happening very often. Actually, it has never happened in the last one year and a half, at least. But it's something we could do. So if, we, if you want to act on some specific hardware, doing porting, for instance, you can, and you cannot afford uh, yourself the hardware, you can come to me and say, okay, I need to buy this hardware for this reason. And what I usually reply is, okay, first we see if we can get it donated to you by the hardware vendor, and if that does not work out, why not? We can actually buy the hardware. And then there are probably other stuff which I've forgotten which will come up in the discussion. Um, last two information, there are a couple of uh, sort of documents I'm trying to write and maintain. One is sponsoring guidelines, which is what I expect from you if you're gonna ask for money, and the principle is simple, be transparent. So if you're going to an event paid by Debian, I expect you to announce that you're going there, and to report back when you came back from the event before you ask for reimbursement. 
once more, the idea is being transparent. So you are going there on money which has been donated to Debian. So it's normal to expect it to be transparent. And also, I mean, you have been a Debian representative. So once more, the project expects you to be transparent on what you have done. And the second document, asking for money, is essentially the kind of things you can ask money for. So what I've told in, in the previous slide, essentially. If you don't remember the URL, you can go to the wiki, go to the teams list, and there is a sort of fake team, which is the, the DPL team made by myself. Um, and you can find it there. Um, so that's about it for the info I wanted to share. And what I would like to discuss with you, and in particular what I need your input of, um, on, is the topics you can find here. So what should we use Debian money for? What else should we use Debian money for? Um, which minimum amount of Debian money should we keep around? For instance, if uh, one day half of the hardware we have breaks down in the same minute, you, you, we need some money to actually uh, pay back the hardware. So what is the safeguard you think you, we, you sh we should keep? Uh, in the specific case of sprints, what can we do to have more sprints? I think we should have more sprints. So the KD project has a budget of which is like 10 or 20 times our budget for sprints. And uh, they are a big software development project, but I think that a project the size of Debian could use having more sprints. And in turn, having more sprints might encourage more donation and actually, as Martin would say, increase the cash flow of Debian, which is good if we know how to use the money properly. And similarly, what can we do to attract more donations. Let's assume that next year we have 10 times the sprint we have had this year. We will need some money. What would be fair and uh, correct to do for Debian to actually attract more donations? So that's it from my side, and I, I welcome your input. Martin, here. Mm. Please, note down on Gobi what people are going to say. It's really, really needed and helpful. And stand up. Okay, um, I just have a very quick question which might be easy to answer. Um, sprints and DebConf, there's not that much of a difference. Um, why are we keeping them separate still? Oh, that's a good question, not that easy to answer. So one reason I can imagine is that we have a tradition of uh, you know, gathering sponsor for uh, DebConf which I think is something which is fairly easy to do, while gathering sponsor for individual sprint is not that easy, in, I think. But yes, I mean, they are one of the small side and one of the big sides of essentially the same thing. So I, I agree with you. Um, I think f in the past we have not looked at, at sprint as some sort of first class citizen, so something that used to happen but not really you know, streamlined or organized in any way. But yes, why not? Probably also we don't need a, a big team to organize sprints. I mean, I've been doing that myself. I'm looking for someone to take over the organizational sprints, but I don't, we don't need a big team to organize sprints, for instance. I'm, I'm basically just wondering, because after every DebConf, we either have a deficit or we have more money left over. And as far as I understand, that has always been, you know, that stayed in Brazil for a long time, and then it stayed in yeah. Edinburgh for a long time, and it was always difficult. And we didn't consolidate it back into Debian. And we didn't in cases where you know, uh, people weren't able to get sponsorship or we just simply okay. didn't have enough money. We didn't actually just get money from Debian. And I think we might want to, because this is just the biggest sprint that we have. Do you want to take, take on this one, Roy? Well, I think that's, to some extent, a fixed issue, um, as of the last year or so's discussions. So the, the issue is sort of fixed, saying that uh, with the general goal that DebConf is a zero-cost event over time, we fork off a DebConf budget at the first time we need to make a DebConf expense, and we merge the budget into proper Debian budget at the end. But, but uh, regarding the fact that we keep money in different places, we actually benefit from them with sprints. For instance, we have, if we have sprints in the UK, we ask Debian UK to do an, the reimbursement. That's fine. And as far as I understood, the uh, Debian auditors are keeping track of the money anyway. Um, we are still keeping the money together as Debian project and yes. not... Correct. So what more can we do to actually use our money to, you know, to benefit the Debian project? Or any other input you might have, of course. OK, 
okay, take nothing. <laughs> Some investment on stock options, maybe. <laughs> Martin. I do have a general question in terms of, um, I mean, how is that money currently invested? Is it, is it just liquidity? I hope so. So I trust the, so uh, from SPI, I see the, you know, I see the reports. I hope it's just checkings and not, uh, you know, <laughs> stock options. I'm, I'm, I'm asking because we are seeing inflation on the rise. No, you, and you, you, we want to do something about you're it. You're right. Um, I, think, I think we are not spending money on stock options and so on. Um, it's money held in trust, and if we would do that, we would uh, violate against uh, US policies as far as I understood. Yeah, that's right. As I certainly understand it, I certainly understand from SPI's point of view, they do have a couple of accounts. Um, one's a standard, I think, a checking account, and one's a savings account. So there is an attempt to maximize um, the, the investments while, while still keeping a, a sensible reserves policy. Um, in terms of the original question, which is what else should we use Debian money for, that there's been an issue in that traditionally Debian has received a lot of. Um, in-kind donations as well. So traditionally, if you just received some money, you'd, be, you'd have to spend a lot more on hardware, you'd have to spend more on hosting, and, and we get quite a bit of that. One of the things that's been mentioned in the past is getting legal advice on contentious things, things like the patents or things like um, what we can do with things like DVD, LibD, DVD, CSS, and if that's legal or not. Um, fortunately, we, we do have SFLC, who's a, who's a sponsoring organization of us, so, so we can get a, quite a bit like that. Um, while I'm stood up, I'll, I'll just mention the, the second point, which is, as well as the minimum amount of Debian money we should keep, I'd also consider the maximum amount of uh, Debian money we should keep. And uh, while I was on the board of SPI, this is for two reasons. Um, firstly, um, if you've got a lot of money, then it creates an awkward position for SPI. It is a non-profit organization, and it's not meant to make a profit. And if the amount of money it keeps getting keeps going up, there's a problem there. Um, the second one is that people who donate to Debian expect it to be used for Debian, not to sit in a bank account. So it can be very useful to spend it. Um, traditionally, there's always been the, the question of what if we get sued? And I, I, I agree with Bedell here. If, if, we, if it happens that we get sued, Debian has never asked the public for money in a big way before. So if this unfortunate situation does happen, I'm fairly confident we could raise a lot of money very quickly to do that. So I'd certainly be interested in looking at um, spending of the money we, we already have. Yeah, I, so I completely agree with that. So I'm, I'm not in particular fear of not having enough money the day we will need them. Um, regarding the, you made a point sort of our responsibility toward organization like SPI. So I've been discussing this point with uh, B-Dale and also with SFLC, which happens to be the legal consultant of both uh, SPI and in some way also directive of Debian. And they both make a good point that SPI make these sort of uh, risk assessments in the moment they accept a project. So I think SPI has made, as accepting Debian as a project, as, a sort, as some sort of you know, uh, as, um, assessment of how risky it is to have Debian as a project, and I don't think we should hold back in uh, taking decision ourselves unless they tell to us, no, please stop, this is dangerous for us. So either you stop or you go away. Okay, so I don't think we should be over concerned about that. And about the specific fear of having too much money, I think what we have no right now, it's ridiculously, ridiculously low for someone who wants to sue SPI and take out an advantage of that. So, but yes, I mean, the point you made of use, having don received donated money and sort of having to use them, I completely agree with that. Well, from DSA point of view, if you are talking about taking over more Debian.net services to Debian.org machines, we will need more hardware in future. And especially server hardware, professional server hardware, is not that cheap as desktop hardware. Indeed. We are speaking about something like 6,000, 8,000 euros per server, um, which then can hold several uh, virtual machines, which we are currently doing for the new machines anyway. So I'm curious, how would people feel about uh, 
going the Wikipedia way of having periodic uh, banners saying, please donate to us. Is, is that a, so who, is, who would be in favor of that? Who would be against that? Ashish, can you motivate? <laughs> I'm curious. Hi. Well, so uh, I'm in favor of it if we actually have some use for the money. Um, it seems like we have, I guess I have to keep standing, okay. It seems like we aren't in desperate need of money, but at the moments when we are, I think that doing that to the front page of debian.org would be valuable. But I actually think that the giant Wikipedia donate banner, if we said had an even, even bigger CD download banner, that would probably be at least as useful for the project. Gunnar? Anyway, I'm not against it. Can someone note down this stuff in the Gobi document? <laughs> Well, I think in part the, the opposition for many of us to, to this idea is because, well, we have done this when we, when, when we need this. We usually don't need it. Uh, but uh, we have, for example, this uh, specific Donate to DevConf uh, banner. That's right now there, but it doesn't have to be there the whole time. And it's as unobtrusive as it can be. Actually, it is not donate to DebConf. It's just a link to the DebConf website, and on the okay. DebConf website, you have a call for donors. Right, right. It's like a, you have to go through a, a second page. It was like this. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, at several points in the past, uh, yes, uh, many of us have had to think on a way to get uh, sponsors. And we have uh, made like uh, this uh, click, click and pledge and uh, similar ideas. But we usually don't need, us, don't need anything, anything like that for the Debian as a whole. Debian doesn't need more money than what it has. So. Actually, no, it's, that's not true. Click and pledge is used very often to donate to Debian, and a substantial amount of that money you see there comes from click and pledge. But you have a point. So the fact that you think it is the case, it clearly means that we have a problem in showing how we are using money. So I think that's, that's a very good point. But we do use money, and we do receive quite some donations. No, of For instance, I mean, I mean, of those 100,000 euros, we have received in the last year at least something like $30,000 of donations. This is a couple of, some transactions I can't remember very well. But, you know, we do receive money via those channels. And we yeah, use them. I, I don't mean we, we don't need the money. I mean that uh, we usually can get it in many ways that are not something that gets in front of the people. What really bothered me about uh, Wikipedia, I have to, uh, well, uh, block all the banners from there because they were really obnoxious. I think that um, if, we, if we actually start to publish the information that um, we have, the financial information, which we are going to do as part of this auditing process, then um, if a, a company sees uh, who, who wants to sponsor Debian because they use Debian and it sees that we have, you know, 200,000 euros in our account is going to think twice about how much money we actually need and might not donate anything because 200,000 euros is a lot of money. What we, I think, need to think of first is how to reduce that money in the greatest way possible, how to spend all of that money. And there is, of course, a minimum, right? Um, on the other hand, I'd, I'd be tempted to say that minimum can be really low because if actually a machine goes down and we are in desperate need, I'm pretty sure that between all of us, <laughs> we're going to come up with the funds to resurrect that machine and even if it's only on a loan basis. So I don't think we're going to have liquidity problems for, for such small um, issues. But on the other hand, if we actually manage to have a, a cash flow that says that we managed to go through 190,000 euros of those 200,000 in a year, and here's what we did, you know, 25 sprints and Debcon for 600 people and this and that, and we supported this other um, upstart of a, of a project, then uh, our potential donor is going to feel rather positive about giving money to that project, in my opinion. May I directly answer to that? Um, we ask for machines, for, for example, for Snapshot Debian Org, and, um, well, uh, directly on the Debian News uh, mailing list and answers we got were, yeah, you, you can have that desktop sort of machine we have. Um, um, we have certain criteria as DSA. We want to have out-of-band access to machines in case hardware goes, uh, we do a kernel upgrade, something breaks. Um, most offers we get on hardware donations, I am on the hardware donations alias, um, is 
more or less desktop related hardware, which we. What's the, I What's the minimum liquidity you want to have? I think you're applying to two different points. So what you're saying is that the day we need, we will be able to find the money. Yeah, While you're applying to a point that the day we need hardware, we will get the hardware for free, which is not quite the yeah. same thing. The, it took us more or less half a year, three quarters of a year, to get acceptable hardware for um, uh, Snapshot Debian org. So this point from the SA is essentially that it's easier to, it's quite difficult to get donated the right hardware we need, while I agree with you that having, if we go ask for money, we'll probably get quite easily them for the other. I agree. But this is actually another point of, you know, using money, show, providing statement of how we use the money will be easier to, to actually gather some. I just want to respond to something that Martin just said, where he said, if a company sees that we have, you know, some whole bunch of euro in our bank account, they might think twice about donating. Um, with that, I quasi disagree. With the next part you said, I totally agree, which is if we say, and we spend 190,000 euro in a year, and here's what we, here's the beautiful document we produced that says that we really spent it on things that are cool, then people will give us money. I just want to emphasize that having money in the bank account is not, dis I don't think it's realistically a disincentive, like having worked at somewhat millions, some millions of dollar nonprofits and that's not the problem. Showing you can spend it is the problem. It's, it's not what I was trying to suggest. I was trying to suggest that if there's 200,000 in the account this year, and next year it's 205,000, and then it's 210,000, and we don't actually do anything, we don't actually have any cash flow report with what we've been doing with that money, then the companies so are I just going to say... We oh can summarize that by saying that only saying we have that money in the banks would not look good, but when that money is very low compared to the cash flow, it would not be a problem. Martin? Anything else? I guess the question is how can we spend more money? For instance, you mentioned um, pledging for this other project, which is something that historically I don't feel particularly good at because I think that people who donate to Debian wants that money to be used in Debian and not to sponsor external project. So this is what I've been applying to a couple of requests in that direction. I think a good way to spend money is uh, helping um, boost people like, or event people um, getting appropriate banners, real banners, not uh, website banners, um, merchandise material and so on, which we... Um, which later on, like when we buy, t we, when we print T-shirts, uh, we we get that money back back anyway. I, I agree, and I've been very happy to give money to the events people, and actually also pushing them to do something like the event box, which is uh, which will cost, which will have some cost, but it's something that we can, you know, go to a booth, look some sort of professional, or at least not, uh, you know, 20 years in the past or something like that. So yes, I agree, but we need suggestion on specific, you know specific things you might buy to actually improve our booths or actually improve our, uh, you know, merchandise in general. Because the, as, a, as an idea, I think we all agree on that. But when it comes to, you know, okay, this is the plan, this is the, uh, the expected budget it will cost, please say yes or no. And arriving at that step, from my point of view, is not that easy. Um, I have an idea, maybe. I mean, I'm going to be shot down in a second after this uh, incredibly successful dunk tank experiment that we've had. Um, how do, I, I could think of a number of things that need to be done in our project which are not particularly exciting. Is our project ever going to think that it's acceptable for us to hire someone for, I'll put it, as administrative task? And one of the things, for instance, we talked about earlier was one person that is there to organize your sprint, for instance. You know, not a particularly geeky thing, not particularly awesome, but maybe one person that, well, it, is, it could be awesome. Everything is awesome, right, if you do it for free software. But are we, can I just have a quick show of hands? Who, who is in favor of considering such an idea? And who is? Absolutely against it. Yeah, I, 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 have a question. I have a complex answer, but Ganef is first. 
Ganef. Um, leaving out the point if you are against or before it, if we are ever going to hire a person, we need to be very careful how we are doing it and need to ask SPI if they are actually able to do it because there are some special rules for nonprofit organizations and then we need to follow them exactly. So on, the, on that front, we have, there are examples of free software projects that have been hiring people for administrative tasks. For instance, the example I made with Martin before was the KDE EV people, which as far as I know, I've hired only one person, and she's indeed the person which is organizing the sprints. Uh, the other example I'm aware of is the Gnomi Foundation. I think that the, the executive director of the Gnomi Foundation is, the, the Gnomi board is hired and paid by the Gnomi Foundation. Um, so my personal take on that is that at the moment I consider a bit of a failure that as a community we are not able to attract volunteers working also on non-packaging uh, stuff and I think we should be able to attract people which are enthusiastic about Debian even if they are not computer geeks and which you know they like doing management stuff. I, it's not easy, I think we are not doing a good job at that and I think we should try but we should also at some point be ready to say, okay, you know what, we have been trying for two years, it's not working, so what do we do? What do we do? Either we accept that we don't have any people able voluntarily to do management, or we do not accept that and we go as Martin suggested. Well, on the other hand, if we can attract people doing that for free, we should do that. I disagree. I mean, we are able to attract packaging contribution for free by people who are doing packaging in their own work life. Why shouldn't they be able to attract management people which does management in their life? You agree. Um, yeah, you just said the same thing as uh, each other. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. I was just going to make the point that, in, yes, you say we might have some job where we haven't found someone for two years, but before we give up and um, hire someone to do that, you can also consider making the same amount of effort as it would take to hire someone in actively finding someone, as in not just a mailing list post somewhere that says we're looking for it, but if you imagine all the effort it would take to hire someone and the processes and the interviewing yeah, right. and so on, if you did a fraction of that, there's a good chance you'd find a volunteer. And obviously, things like the sprints and so on, again, while I'm not necessarily saying everything should be put into one big team, it might be destroy things, um, a lot of the DebConf work is pretty similar and we have a lot of volunteers who want Th to do that's this. That's true, that's true. Another idea that we had during uh, lunch earlier was that rather than hiring, you know, an accountant or someone, or I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say accountant, uh, <laughs> someone, someone for uh, for a job such as uh, the one I suggested earlier, um, can we maybe use money to bootstrap teams? And one of the teams that um, we were talking over lunch today, that was with Penny after the uh, Debian Women stuff, is for instance. Uh, it seemed I wasn't there, but it seemed that what was needed was some sort of like a person that knows where manpower or woman power is needed in the project and can then like match make project newbie and mentor that kind of thing and and I think this is a beautiful job for volunteers to do, but it also seems like a gigantic task to to do like you know to just start. So we could have a sprint, obviously, and, and, and start these things as a sprint, or we could potentially take money and throw it at someone who has experience in this area for six months with the explicit goal. And here I'm thinking of you know, Debian Installer and, and Debian Edu and all these projects that have been funded or where people have been funded with a specific goal to bootstrap a team, not to do the work, but to bootstrap the team. Yeah, of course, there is a potential issue that once you do start paying someone for doing admin task or, you know, going out and, and being the, the people who, you know, who know where to find the manpower, woman power, whatever, it's incredibly difficult then to go back away from doing that. Um, the, the very point when you start paying somebody to do admin work, we will never find volunteers for admin work anymore. You know, they'll be expecting to be paid in just the same way. Yeah, Paul. Just a thought to consider. There is a question by, from comment by Paul. Um, I think a far more fruit, fruitful approach is possibly instead of Debian hiring people directly, try and find Debian 
um, funders, donators who, I mean, there's one organization I'm involved with, we have somebody from another organization who works half day a week for us. That solves all the problems with employment, and if that ceases to be a donation in kind from that company, then that possibly avoids the situation that Steve is, because that person for the duration is not actually an administrative or Debian, it's either a contribution or it's somebody who's being contracted in kind as well. So my take on this is that, so I've been in other voluntary organization where in the beginning they were completely volunteer based and at some point they decided to ask someone, not related to computer science at all. And my very tiny, teeny experience in that front is that you have a problem when you have side by side people doing the same thing, someone paid and someone not paid. To some extent, we already have this problem in Debian because there are people which are lucky enough to be paid to, work, to also work on Debian. But it's a bit different, at least emotionally, when, and also actually conceptually, when it is the project itself which is paying someone. So my personal bar on that would be in an area, in area where we have always had volunteers, well, you should not put someone else which is paid to do the same at least not paid by the, you know, the community of volunteers which will stay side by side with them. If you are going to have entirely new area, like for instance management or auditing or, well auditing, no, management or whatever, this, you know, this um, problem ceases to exist, but still I would personally consider it a failure because Debian is such a big project, such a sort of society which I hope we can attract volunteers working on, on everything the society itself needs. But I would put the barrier in, you know, if it's something completely new, well, maybe. If it's something we have always been doing on a volunteer basis, well, no. But that's, that's a very personal take, not necessarily, um, you know, representative of all of us. Yeah, I was just going to say as well, in terms of that volunteers and people working together, the, it's not just that it demotivates the volunteers and they get fed up. It also happens the other way around, that the people who are in a paid position can feel very threatened that there are volunteers trying to take away their job from them and actually end up in a kind of political infighting with the volunteer people trying to stop the volunteers from doing work so that they justify their own paid um, existence. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think, and the reason I like, raise my hand to a half uh, when, when Martin asked about this is that uh, when, when the Donk Tank experiment was made, we were in a moment of crisis because we, we were at the a hardest uh, release cycle we, we faced, and well, uh, yes, things were, were going very, very bad for the project as a whole. And uh, I think that was like a desperate maneuver to try to uh, get things back, uh, back on track. Uh, that it worked partially, it failed partially, yes. It, uh, uh, different w it can be seen different ways. Uh, but the thing is, right now we're arguing uh, about a completely hypothetical situation Maybe you will correct, uh, correct me, uh, but I don't think we have any need of paid work right now. Uh, the most boring tasks for some people are being uh, carried out with passion by other people who find them interesting. So I, I don't think, feel right now we have shortage of uh, voluntary work. Well, if, if we have companies willing to pay someone within Debian, um, for doing a specific task in Debian, like we already had, I think, with Debian installer, parts of, it, of the Debian installer sure. thing. I'm completely fine with that. If a company said, I want this extension or this whatever in Debian and hire, hire a Debian developer for that, that's perfectly fine. But it's not spending, uh, but I think we should not spend uh, Debian assets on hiring persons within Debian. Uh. I would like to mention that maybe hiring people is not a good idea, but it's still interesting to consider uh, how we can use money to bring some project to completion quicker, quickly. I mean, for, for instance, uh, right now you have uh, Tolef who is working on uh, a tool to convert system they need config file to CCNIT scripts. He's doing the, this on his spare time it's surely going to take a lot of time. Maybe if we could say, okay, uh, we're going to uh, cover your living cost for a few weeks so that you can spend more time on this, uh, we, we could have this short, you know, well, more, more quickly than otherwise. And I'm sure 
many people would love to use this money to solve this digression this problematic discussion or should we have free free base day or system day when we can have both with a bit of work but this work is not happening quickly enough neil just finally, as I, I note there's uh, not much time left, that does sound incredibly like Dunk Tank. Um, that's like a, that, that's a project exactly. which we need to complete more quickly like our release. Yeah, and it was, it was meant to be covering two people's living costs for two months, I think, um, so we can get the release out. Um, now I know, I know we, we don't certainly have as many Flame Wars anymore, and, uh, and maybe we miss them and want to try and have more again, but um, I, I'm not entirely sure if that would work. Um, Another thing we can do, which we haven't done in the past, is advertise and recruit. We haven't really advertisement, sorry, advertise and recruit um, actively. We haven't really sort of issued press releases and saying we need people who will do this. Please come and join the Debian project and really push for that. It's all been fairly organic, so that may be a way of attracting those people who we haven't yeah. had before. Yeah. So I actually, so Rafael, Rafael knows that we we have debated quite often that topic. I personally disagree with that. I think it's not worth even if we only consider the side effect of the huge you know, debate that we create, which I think is not a debate worth having, even only that would not make it worse. But beside, even if I put it aside, even in that model, even if you're not hiring someone, and actually what the other open source projects are doing, like uh, to when they actually hire people, they do not hire, they do exactly as you said. So they contact them for six months or for one year, but that does not solve the issue of you know, people working side by side one volunteer and one paid. So sorry, time is up. So thanks a lot for your input.